Hi guys, Olive here, here today to review Red Comet, The Short Life and Blazing Art of Sylvia Plath by Heather Clark. This book was published in 2020 by Knopf, and the hardcover comes in at 1,152 pages. This is a biography of the late poet and author Sylvia Plath, who is perhaps best known for her intense poetry, for her one and only published novel, The Bell Jar, for her marriage to fellow famous poet Ted Hughes, and for the fact that she committed suicide at age 30 when her two young children were in the next room. The author of this biography is a poetry professor, and she's also the author of a couple of other books, including another one on Plath and Hughes, and she worked on this book for eight years. She had access to a lot of unpublished material, including some newly discovered letters. The author of this biography also accidentally discovered a piece of one of Sylvia Plath's lost novels, so that's included in this biography. Also included is a lot of information about Sylvia Plath's family, her family background, which other Sylvia Plath biographies have not included previously. That is to say that while this isn't the first Sylvia Plath biography to ever be published, it is certainly the most comprehensive to date, and I think the length of it kind of speaks to that. Admittedly, I have not read the other Sylvia Plath biographies that came out before this one. I would like to now, definitely, but there are portions from those previous biographies quoted within this book, and from what I gathered on my own and from what the author insinuated, it seems like at least some of those previous biographers had an opinion of Sylvia Plath going in, and from what I saw in those sections and and from what the author said, it seems like those preconceived notions that they had of who she was as a person at least had the ability to color their interpretations of the details of her life. Not for one moment in my reading experience of this new biography did I get the sense that Heather Clark was going too easy on Sylvia Plath, but nor did I think she was going too hard on Sylvia Plath. I think she presents everything fairly. Obviously, she must have a certain fondness for Sylvia Plath, given that she dedicated almost a decade of her life to researching her, but she really does try to be fair. She's happy to present present you with the good but also the bad aspects of who Sylvia Plath was and what her personality was like. She's happy to show you the ways in which Sylvia Plath was very progressive, but then also highlight the fact that she was very much a product of the times in which she lived. There have been a lot of discussions about Sylvia Plath and the kind of person she was since her death in 1963, but those conversations have a tendency to center around her suicide, as though all the events of Sylvia Plath's life were just leading up to her eventual suicide, or everything in her earlier life could just be mined as a possible predictor of her suicide. There's also a very popular perception that Sylvia Plath was just inherently unstable. She was somewhat crazy, and thus her demise was inevitable. Heather Clark makes a very deliberate decision to not make this a book all about about the death of Sylvia Plath. She actually leans away from that perception that Sylvia Plath was just crazy all along. She actually provides evidence to the contrary every chance she gets. In fact, especially because the author of this biography is a poetry professor, there is a much greater emphasis on Sylvia Plath's development as an artist, particularly as a poet, because poetry seemed to be what she preferred to write. Stemming off of that, something that I really appreciated within this biography were all of the breakdowns of Sylvia's poetry. The author would more or less translate what she felt Sylvia was trying to say in each of her poems, and she would also bring your attention to the aspects of Sylvia's poetry that were so brilliant. I am not a poetry expert by any means, so I found that so helpful. After reading each of those breakdowns, I felt like I had such a firmer grasp on what Sylvia Plath was trying to say with her poetry. But not only that, this author has such an intimate knowledge of the details of Sylvia Plath's life. In some places, she even has like a timeline of events. This author, if she knew when a specific poem was written, she could kind of look back at the details of Sylvia Plath's life and show you how certain poems might have been inspired by certain events in her life. All of that to say that this isn't just a look inside the life of Sylvia Plath, it's also a look inside of her work. By including the poetry element, you're also able to see just how much Sylvia and her husband Ted Hughes 
influenced each other's work. There's a lot of Ted Hughes's poetry in this book as well. And of course, there are a lot of details about their fraught marriage, the infidelity, the eventual separation shortly before her death. In the conversations that have been happening since Sylvia Plath's death that I mentioned earlier, there has been a lot of back and forth regarding who is ultimately responsible for Sylvia Plath's death. And long before those conversations started happening in the peanut gallery, they were happening a lot closer to home in the days following her death, when the people around her were trying to figure out what happened and really process what happened. But since that conversation has more or less been taken over by the general public, it has always seemed to me that Sylvia Plath fans think that Ted Hughes destroyed her with his infidelity, while Ted Hughes fans think that Sylvia Plath brought way too much chaos into his life. The author doesn't even mention this argument within the book, which I definitely think was wise, and because she doesn't mention it, she certainly doesn't take a side. What she does do is present you with all of the facts and then lets you draw your own conclusions. And I think because there is so much information in this book, once again, it's over 1,000 pages, I think any reader, certainly any close reader, will be able to see that things were a whole lot more complicated than who wronged whom. Certainly neither party was perfect, and as you read, you can see that it was kind of a powder keg of a matchup. The author, Heather Clark, in fact, doesn't give a whole lot of her own opinions regarding the things that happened in Sylvia Plath's life. She will occasionally step in to make inferences that could potentially fill in gaps of information or to point out blatant contradictions. The place where the author makes her voice the most present is right at the end of the book where she's using all of the information she has about Sylvia Plath's life to try to put the puzzle pieces together about why Sylvia Plath would have been in the mental state that she was to make the choice that she did. She makes a very convincing argument that a number of factors were at play and she tells you what all of those are. I think by ending the book that way, the author ended up achieving what seemed to be her unstated goal throughout the book, which is to pull the rug out from under the notion that Sylvia Plath was just a crazy woman, and also to kind of swat away this darkness that seems to hover over Sylvia Plath's image in the modern day. Let's get it straight here. Sylvia Plath was indeed fascinated by the violent and the gruesome in ways that have always seemed to make people feel uncomfortable. She could be judgmental and she could be ruthless, but that's not the entirety of who she was. Absolutely the most valuable thing I gained from the process of reading this book was a clearer picture than I have ever had before of the woman who Sylvia Plath really was. She was ferociously intelligent. She was a naturally gifted poet. She had a thirst for knowledge that never seemed to be quenched. But in my eyes, she was always someone who was chasing after happiness and success, constantly trying to figure out where and with whom she could finally feel settled. She absolutely detested the pressures and the simultaneous limitations that society put on her as a woman, but she also seems to have been completely incapable of not internalizing those things. Nor could she ever be convinced that she couldn't have it all. She would actually push herself to the point of breakdown in order to have it all. I can't even begin to express how impressive I found this biography. It is obviously very heavy in detail, but somehow, even though it's over 1,000 pages long, it just flies by. You're really able to sink in to each one of the sections, each phase of Sylvia's life, because everything just flows so well. There's nothing about the writing that will trip you up or get in your way. And the author's command of the material is so strong that she really makes it seem like you're just sitting back and watching these real life events play out. But she handles everything with the utmost respect. If you are a Sylvia Plath fan, you must read this new biography. But even if you have more of a casual interest in her and her life, as I did starting out, and you can dedicate the time to reading this biography, I really think you should consider doing so. It is an incredible biography of a true literary icon. If you have read this book, if you have thoughts on it, or if you have plans to read it now, especially if I've convinced you to read it, I would love to hear from you in the comment section below. But if you 
you would prefer to reach out to me somewhere other than the YouTube comment section. I am on a variety of different places on social media and the links to all of my profiles will be in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video. Bye.